How y'all doing today? Today is September 14th, 2018, and we're on part two of our series that we are uh, we started the other day, prepping for judgment. And as you can see here, I got a couple of bags. I got a bag of pintos, and I got a bag of regular old white rice. Both of these are excellent prepping foods. Um, rice and beans can stay good forever, basically, as long as they're kept dry. Um, archaeologists that have uh, discovered ancient Chinese tombs in China have found huge bins of rice, thousands of years old, ready to eat, as long as it stays dry. So, when you purchase things like these, this here is a 20 pound bag of beans, and this is a 10 pound bag of rice. I think it's 10 pounds. Um, yeah, 10 pounds. 10 pound bag of rice, 20 pound bag of beans. And the good thing about those is that uh, they're good for long-term food storage, and um, in the springtime, you can germinate the beans and plant them, and they'll grow because they're just dried. So they make for really good survival food. And as long as you keep them dry, they'll be good forever. So my suggestion, um, I like using old coolers. I like using plastic bins that you get from uh, Wally World. And you can buy 55-gallon plastic food-grade barrels that you can fill full of this stuff, leave them in the bag. Just leave them right in the bag, put them down in the barrel, and seal the barrel. Nothing gets to it. No rodents, no nothing. So that it makes for good survival food. Also, you probably want to purchase some of this, which is bullion. And you can take bullion. It doesn't matter what flavor. It doesn't matter. Beef, chicken, pick up a variety. There's all different kinds of bullion. Um, and that way it gives your food a little bit of flavor, kind of helps with the monotony, because after a while eating rice and beans is going to become really monotonous. So you need to change it up a little bit, add a little bit of flavor to your food, and it helps. These are uh, ways of being able to stock up on food, emergency food, without having to go out and purchase those buckets that uh, other channels are selling, that survival channels are selling that are $99, $100, $150 for, what, a month's worth of food? You can get a lot more out of a month because you got to figure out of a 10-pound bag of rice, you're probably going to consume maybe a cup a day per adult. So it goes a long way. Beans are the same way because you soak the beans down, you let them soak all day long, and then you boil them down, and a cup of beans goes a long way. You'd be surprised, and it'll fill your belly, and it's got nutrition. Beans are protein, rice are carbs. So it gives you a little bit of a, of, it gives you what you need, basically. Still need vegetables and stuff like that, but in a pinch, this will get you by. And if you add a little bullion to it, then it adds a little flavor to it, helps you out, so that way you're not just eating plain rice and beans, because that would be very monotonous after a while. Um, another thing that's really good are granola bars, and you can get good granola bars, like um, like the Cliff Bars, things like that, and you just pack them away, you seal them up, and you pack those away right next to your rice and beans, and that way you've got quick food, something that you can just eat, or dry fruit. You can dry fruit and put them into a bag. I've got sealed dry fruit that's a couple years old that's just as good as the day I made it. Bananas, apples, stuff like that. You can dry them and put them into a bag and seal them, pull the air out of them, and they're good to go for years. It's really good survival food, and it makes it so that it's lightweight. Um, the beans and rice, if you have to bug out, it's going to be a little difficult because you're going to have weight there. So usually in my bug out bags, I'll pack about 
mm, five pounds of rice into a big old gallon Ziploc baggie, suck the air out of it, and put it into my pack. And that way you've got traveling food that you can even eat rice without it being cooked. If you're in a pinch and, and you know, you just don't have time or a able to make a, a batch of rice with water or what have you, you can just grab a handful of rice and eat it if you can get it down and um, it'll expand in your stomach. So, you know, it shows you a little bit, it's got a little bit better nutritional value than, say, Top Ramen because Top Ramen is just junk. It doesn't really have any nutritional value whatsoever. It's just filler. At least the rice and beans have some nutritional value. So that kind of helps you out with um, our survival food. We studied about how it's pertinent that we store up food. Um, another one that's pretty good is like corn. If you dry corn, just like chicken food, it works the same way for humans. And oats. The only problem with oats is that you have to seal them airtight or else you'll get weevils in them. And, you know, then your oats are kind of ruined. Then they're just good for chicken food because chickens don't care if there's weevils in them. And, you know, it's just different ways of stocking up food. So that way you, in a pinch, can feed your family. Very important. You don't want your family starving to death. You don't want to have to have thoughts of raiding other people to feed your starving family. So it's definitely time to get these together. And you can get this relatively cheap. Uh, the 20 pound bag of beans is like seven bucks and the 10 pound bag of rice is like five or six. It's inexpensive. And if you go to like Sam's Club, you can get bigger bags. Um, like 50 pound bags of rice that are in, um, um, what do you call it, bags, potato bags. So that way the, the moisture gets wicked away. And the beans too. They have them in, in the same kind of bags, but larger bags. So that way it makes it easier to uh, store it. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are just some thoughts for you uh, for survival food. And... Um, the corn is a good idea if you have any animals because that way you can store away however much dried corn and you can feed that to the animals and your family too. You know, field corn might not be the best corn, but it'll fill your belly. So, just some thoughts. Just some thoughts. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do for dried food that it, it just works out. Uh, cans are kind of heavy. So if you're going to go with canned food, I would say you probably ought to put them in some place like a, a shelter, you know, like an underground shelter or something like that. So that way, if you have to bug out, you might be able to come back later and get your food supplies. That's all I can tell you. Cans are very heavy to try to transport, but so are the bags. So you got to have a plan. You got to have some kind of a plan figured out how you're going, if you have to bug out, how you're going to take your food with you. So, just some thoughts. Coffee is a really good thing to stock up on. Um, coffee is also a good barter item. So if you go like to Sam's Club and you buy three pound cans, big cans of coffee from Sam's Club, you can store that. It's sealed. So you can store it long term. And what's coffee going to do? It ain't going to go bad. And in a situation where you may have to barter, then you can barter with your coffee. Open a can of coffee, give somebody a pound of coffee, they trade you for whatever you're looking for, and everybody's happy, and it's not an item like firearms or bullets or knives or anything like that that you might end up having come back at you at some point. It's a safe barter item. Um, tobacco is a safe barter item. And these are things that people are going to want. They're going to want tobacco. They're going to want coffee. If there's any way that you could stock up on cocoa. Cocoa is a comfort food. Um, you know, it might not have much in the way of nutrition and a lot of sugar in it. But if you're in a situation where you're surviving, you need something to bring your spirits back up. So if you're able to barter for 
I don't know, half a pound of cocoa, then at least you can make a cup of hot cocoa and it's a comfort thing. Tea, tea is a comfort thing. In bad situations, little things like that have a tendency to really help your morale. Um, bullion. Bullion's wonderful stuff because if you get a cup of hot water, drop a couple bullion cubes in it, and it, you know, there's, there's not much in the way of nutrition here. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Um, one cube makes a cup. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Got 10 calories, no fat, a lot of sodium, potassium, one gram of carbs, one gram of sugar, no protein. No, not a significant source of calories from saturated fats. There's, there's hardly anything in this that's nutritious, but it's a morale booster. You, you're cold and you're wet and you're just trying to survive. If you can get a cup of hot water, you can have a cup of hot broth. Warm you up inside. So they're just things that you need to be thinking about, about, you know, whether or not I should get this item, whether or not I should get that item, what, what benefit is this item going to have, how much weight is it going to add. You have to think about all of these things when you're putting together survival food. So um, just some ideas and some ideas for buy it, barter items too because, you know, people are going to be looking for things. Initially, they're just going to try to survive. Initially, you're going to see people seeking food, water. They're just going to be trying to survive. First aid items. First aid items are great things to barter with. Everybody needs a bandage once in a while. So those are good things to barter with, and they're things that people are going to be looking for. So if you happen to run into a situation where someone is trying to barter, then you have some barter items to be able to work with. Not only that, but you can use them for your own consumption, too. I mean, how many people drink coffee? I drink coffee every day. I got a cup sitting right here with me right now. Um, just, just stuff like that to think about. Tell me what you think. Give me your opinions on what kind of survival food you think is the best. Because, you know, we're prepping for judgment. And it's probably going to be a while before the Lord comes. So we have to think about these things. Just like Joseph helped Egypt to prepare for the famine, there's a famine coming for us too. So it's time to get it together. Time to prepare, time to get ready, and time to think about, a serious thought, think about your family and yourself, how you're going to survive can't just go to the grocery store if there's nothing on the shelves. So what's the next best thing? While we have time, fill a couple coolers full of dried rice and dried beans. Coolers seal. Don't have no problem with that. So it's a good thing to use. Old, old Coleman coolers or the totes, the, the big plastic totes that you buy at Wally World for five bucks. They'll hold a lot of rice. Leave it in the bag. Don't empty it out of the bag. Leave it in the bag. If you've got any silica gel, um, like this stuff here, like this, which is just a silica packet, this works really good to keep the moisture down in your, in your storage tubs. Throw a few of these in, and you won't have a problem with moisture or condensation inside your tubs. I know I live out in the desert. It's dry. I don't have to worry about those things. But if you live in an environment where there's humidity, you're going to have to worry about those things, especially storing in plastic, because plastic will form condensation. So you need to work out some way to absorb the moisture. And silica works great. So you just might think about a few things, you know, when you're, when you're sealing things. Also, if you're going to use, say, a plastic food-grade 55-gallon drum, you know, when you seal that, there's a possibility that a fly might get in there. So before you seal it, take a no pest strip and tape it on the lid, on the top of the lid, inside, inside the top lid. 
tape a no pest strip in there so when you seal it, there's a no pest strip sealed inside, but it's not touching the food or anything. It's glued, taped to the top of the lid. And that way, if there's any bugs or anything that get in there before you seal it, it'll kill them. So they won't produce. They won't, they won't ruin your food with bug eggs. You know, there are just a lot of things that you need to think about with this. You need to plan. Okay? So there's just a few, a few ideas for y'all. Um, I hope this video has been beneficial to you. I hope this series is going to be beneficial to you. The next thing that we're going to tackle is we're going to tackle water and how we're going to, first of all, the scripture that goes along with the water. And then I'll show you different techniques of storing water, purifying water, so that your family will have water. We go by the rule of threes, okay? Three minutes without oxygen. Three days without water. Three weeks without food. That's what will kill you. Okay, so go by the rule of threes. Again, three minutes without air, dead. Three days without water, dead. Three weeks without food, you starve to death. So those are the rules to go by as far as your food, water, and such. All right. All right, gang. Well, I'm not going to drag this out today. I just figured that I would do part two. I told you I was going to on Friday. So here's part two for you. Um, if you have any comments, suggestions, any of anything, anything to add to this conversation, please put it in the bucket. Let's talk about this. This is important. This is almost as important as God's word because we're going to have to survive. So this is worth thinking about. God's word's always first. It's always the most important because everything in God's word is for us. It's guidance for us. But we have to nourish ourselves also. So be prepared. Get ready. It's coming. It is coming. Repent with your mouth and your heart. Declare Jesus Christ to be your Savior. That's the first step. Because without Jesus, it's just chaos. Absolute chaos. You have to have Jesus in your life to have any kind of sanity. And then, form a relationship with Jesus. Pray to him. The only way to the Father is through the Son. So pray to Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. And then prepare. Get ready. Because it's coming, gang. Might not be tomorrow. It might not be next week. But it's coming. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Like I said, you don't want to be looking in through somebody else's windows while they're eating dinner and you're starving to death. Or contemplating killing someone so that you can steal their food. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Isn't it easier just to make sure that your family's taken care of? I think so. All right, gang, that's all I've got for today. Uh, Sunday, we'll continue our journey through First Kings. And um, then uh, I guess next Tuesday, I'll go ahead and make another video for our water. All right? All right, gang, that's all I got. Y'all have a great uh, rest of your, or your weekend's coming up. Today's Friday, isn't it? Wow, I'm not used to making videos on Fridays. Enjoy your weekend. Love your family. Keep them close. Teach them. Guide them. Get them into the word and guide them. Okay? It's up to you. There's nobody else going to do it for you. It's up to you. All right, my brothers and sisters, y'all have a good weekend. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye.